Hi, this is Tim Erden, author of Statistics in Plain English, and this lesson is about the similarities between t-tests and ANOVA. Um, people, when they're learning statistics, often get confused about the different kinds of t-tests that there are in ANOVA, and try and think about them as being really separate things, and that is important. Um, you want to know which situation calls for which kind of t-test or ANOVA. Um, but it's also important to understand that they're all really very similar and kind of doing the same thing. So I'm going to explain how, the, how they're similar. Um, all right, so these are the formulas for the most commonly used t-tests um, to compare different groups and the ANOVA. So the first thing that all four of these formulas have in common is that they're all really kind of trying to do the same thing. They're comparing group means to each other to find out whether they are meaningfully different from each other. That is, to find out whether they're statistically significantly different from each other. And um, let's take a look at the formula for the one sample t-test first because it's probably the most straightforward. And this is way where we are comparing a sample mean to a population mean. That is the numerator of the formula. And the denominator of the formula is the standard error of the sample mean. So that formula repeats itself in all of the t-tests <coughs> and ANOVA formulas. What we've got is an observed difference between means on the top, and then that's going to be divided by the standard error on the bottom. And what that tells us is, how big is the observed difference between the means relative to the amount of difference I would expect to get between means just due to random sampling? So in this case, we have one sample mean, and we have the standard error of the difference between one sample mean. Now, let's compare it to the formula for the independent t-test over here. And <clears throat> again, what we have on the top is just a difference between means. In this situation, it's a difference between two observed sample means. So you have two independent samples and you're going to compare their means. And then on the bottom, what you have is the standard error of the difference between the means. And so that is telling you how much of a difference would I expect to get between two randomly selected sample means from these two different populations when the sample means are of a given size. So again, the formula is exactly the same. Is the difference between my observed sample means big or small compared to the difference I would expect to get just due to random sampling? Same thing repeats itself over here, down here, with the dependent samples t-test. In this case, the top, difference between observed sample means, the bottom, expected difference due to random sampling, the standard error of the difference between the means. So. Again, exact same idea. Is the observed difference, what I see is the difference between my sample means, big or small, compared to the expected difference that I would get between my means just due to random sampling? And finally, um, perhaps the <clears throat> third, or, or the most confusing one in terms of its similarity to t-tests, is the f value, the formula for the f value. And in this formula, we have the mean square between, that is the average squared difference between the sample means and the grand mean, divided by the mean square within, that's the average amount of squared difference between the individual scores and their sample means. So here's how it works. The top of this, the MSB, is just like the top of the t-test formulas. What is the difference between my observed sample means? But because the ANOVA can handle more than two sample means, it needs to find an average difference between the sample means. So on average, how different are these sample means? And then on the bottom, what you've got is, on average, how much variability would I expect to get between uh, the numbers just due to random sampling? And in an ANOVA, we find the expected difference by looking at how much variability is there within each sample. So 
the difference between the individual scores and the sample mean, that's just considered to be random sampling variation, just random noise. That's the difference we would expect to get just due to random sampling. So on the top, we say, what's the difference between my sample means on average? <clears throat> and how big is that difference compared to the amount of difference we would expect to get just due to random sampling? And that is this mean square within, otherwise known as the mean square error. So in all four of these formulas, we got the same thing going on. How big is the observed difference between the sample means compared to the amount of difference we would expect to get just due to random sampling? And that is the standard error is basically what's on in the... So I hope that helps. Um, once you get the idea that all of these things are testing, how big is the observed difference between the means relative to the size of the expected difference between the means just due to random sampling? Um, you can see that these are all really closely related uh, formulas and tests, and they're all doing basically the same thing. And to take it one step further, in t-test, generally speaking, if the observed difference between the means is about twice as big or maybe a little bit bigger than twice as big as the expected difference between the means, then it's generally going to be considered statistically significant. Um, generally speaking, if the um, average squared difference between the sample means is about three times bigger than the expected squared difference uh, or the standard error in an ANOVA, then that'll be significant. Now remember, these things are sensitive to sample size, so smaller your sample size, the bigger the difference between the observed and the expected needs to be before it'll be statistically significant. So hopefully that's helpful.